she has lived in the shadow, the shadow of her late husband, John Lennon, and the shadow of her own seclusion. Now, as Barbara Howard discovered, Yoko Ono is re-emerging. John Lennon once jokingly told Yoko Ono that she was going to be known forever as Mrs. Lennon. The jest became sad reality at Lennon's death. People around the world mourned with her, many gathering outside her apartment, hoping in some way to share the loss and grief. Being John Lennon's widow is an identity Ono accepts with pride. But keeping the flame for someone else is an impossible task. Invariably, there are critics. Those who accuse her of having manipulated her husband's life, who blamed her for the breakup of the Beatles, and who charged she built a career off the Lennon legend. Through all the name-calling, Yoko Ono refused to fight back. It wasn't necessary that I was trying to be a goody-goody. I was just feeling, feeling tongue-tied. I couldn't speak back to them, in a way. And I thought, well, if I can't speak back to them, I shouldn't. But on her latest album, Star Piece, Ono is finally having her say. In one song she wrote, Remember Raven, there are angry words for the detractors and exploiters. And as for the music critics, many are now convinced of her independent artistic abilities. Anger comes from uh, some of the terrible things that happened in my life, my personal life, and it was a genuine anger. And I thought, well, we all share that, so why not bring it out? Was that sort of a catharsis for you to write those lyrics, to get some of the hostility out that you felt? I felt good. Now I don't have to write a book. <laughs> That's how I felt. Do you think that because there is no input, none of John's music, none of John's lyrics there, that for the first time people are going to be able to separate your music from your legend and your family's legend? I don't think so. Because of this record being something to do with peace, and John and I were making the effort together, so I wanted the Lennon name somewhere, and I didn't know how to put it in without ripping off the name. It's a very delicate situation. The concept is by Yoko Ono Lennon, and somehow, because, I mean, after all, peace was something that we thought of together and really worked on it together. So that's the way I feel about it. But while his memory is largely a constructive force, the negatives crop up to haunt her. In a recently published excerpt from an upcoming book on the Beatles, Paul McCartney is quoted as saying some unflattering things about Lennon, remarking at one point that Lennon could be a maneuvering swine. Characteristically, the press played it up, just as characteristically Ono played it down. The press wanted to have some fun. And uh, we all have that experience of uh, being used for that. And uh, I think they wanted uh, some statement from me about it, and it would have been a public slash, slashing, and it's just, I didn't want to do that. So I said, well, I'm sorry, boys. <laughs> You're not going to get that. You're not going to have the fun, you know? Paul, I can't imagine that he wanted this to happen at this time either. Well, I'm sure he didn't, and I'm sure it's a very strange kind of um, uh, karma, whatever. You have become very practiced at showing love and turning the other cheek, haven't you? I'm sure that we made a lot of mistakes as well. Well, I know that we made a lot of mistakes. And from those mistakes, if we don't learn that other people can make the same mistakes too, then I'll be very, very foolish. It is now 20 minutes before the hour. Well, Yoko Ono is stepping out of the shadows onto center stage these days. Five years after the death of her husband, John Lennon, she is back on tour. I visited with Yoko Ono at her home here in New York City the other day, and she talked about her feelings and her fears when she decided to perform again. An hour before going on stage, I asked myself, why am I doing this? This was Yoko Ono's first concert tour since John Lennon's death in 1980. And while the European part of the tour was not commercially successful, for Yoko, it had other rewards. It was really frightening. I was totally scared. I was totally scared. But then, when I went on the stage and I finished the whole concert and 
came backstage, I felt so good. I thought, well, I did it. And it was in that sense, I think it was a personal victory because I did overcome something I was most scared of at the time. We were talking earlier about getting out and, and being amongst people and taking off your glasses and facing the world. Where does the strength come in your own gut to be able to do that? I'm not a very strong person, so I really don't know. I think I'm very lucky in some ways. But when you are, um, well, it's like the mouth, the, mouth, the mouth that roared, you know. You just have to, at one point, decide that you're going to face it. What do you think people's set image of Yoko Ono is? Well, John Lennon's widow who's sitting in Dakota. <laughs> and I think that that was getting to be very comfortable for them. And now, because I'm trying something new, uh, they feel a bit uncertain about it, whether they like that or not. They're not sure. And that happens, you know, uh, for actors and actresses sometimes, uh, when they're known for a certain role. And if they try to venture out to another role or something, then uh, they get a lot of flack. The flack started back in 1969 when Yoko married John Lennon. Beatles fans blamed her for the group's breakup and Lennon's formidable talent overshadowed Ono, who struggled to maintain her own identity as an avant-garde artist. Now, years later, Ono is finally content with a different identity. After his death, the feeling I had was a very strange feeling that I didn't think I would ever have, which was when people call me Mrs. Lennon, I felt good about it. I felt that it meant that we were still together. And because I lost him so suddenly, Anything, any sign that would make me feel that I'm still together with him um, somehow made me feel good. Something else I've always wondered about you, and I'm, I don't know where it comes from. When I drive by this building, I've never been in this apartment before, I sit and I think, why does Yoko Ono stay in the Dakota? Isn't that much more difficult for her? But this is where we live together. This is where every room reminds me of John. And, um, well, yes, so it seems like I'm holding on to his memory. But I'm going to allow myself to go through that instead of just forcing myself to cut myself off from the past. I said to you when I saw you with your glasses off, why don't you go out or talk with your glasses off? You have such pretty eyes. And you said... Thank you. <laughs> Well, this is my security blanket. And what happened was, after what happened in 1980, uh, the first thing I did was grab this, and I just put on this, these glasses, and I felt so comfortable that I didn't have to show my eyes. Now, I would feel naked if I don't have these glasses on. But maybe, I'm not saying that this is how I'm going to be, you know. I just think that at this time, I still need it. Six years ago today, millions of people were shocked to hear that John Lennon had been shot down on a New York City street just outside his, impart his apartment, in fact. Since then, his widow Yoko Ono has been trying her best to protect his memory and to raise their son, Sean. Recently, Denise Yamada spoke with Yoko Ono, seen here along with some rare home movies of the family. Watch. <laughs> first couple of years was hell, you know. And I thought that hell is going to be over, but then this, the next couple of years, I, th I think was worse than that. When I say hell, I mean a lot of things were stolen from us and, and many strange books were written about us and, and just incredible hell, you know? <laughs> uh, unspeakable hell. And after all that, <clears throat> I think that I'm still sort of recuperating from that. And some people are telling me that it gets harder after five years because you don't get the sympathy and you still feel the hurt, you know. And now I'm starting to understand that in a way. I sometimes feel very lonely, uh, not because I don't have friends, because it's something that I don't share with them. It's the loneliness of still remembering the hurt and the separation from John. Mm -hmm.
These days I'm starting to think, well, I should start to learn to let go things. For instance, I still have um, packs of John's cigarettes, which I don't feel like throwing away. And it's in the closet as he put it in. You know, it's down to that. And then am I going to clean it up? Am I, am I going to throw the cigarettes out of the uh, closet, you know? But those decisions I have to make gradually. If Sean wasn't around, I could have just sort of uh, sold everything, or maybe not even selling, but just <laughs> checking everything, move on, and stay in a hotel or something, which I'm perfectly comfortable with, and just go to a, a corner bar every night or whatever, and get drunk. Or Well, I don't drink alcohol, so I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but that's just an expression, you know? I could have been reckless, that's what I'm saying. And um, each time I felt like being reckless, I thought that uh, I have to just keep the same life that Joan and I were leading, in the same apartment, in the same routine, for Sean's sake. Being one, a one-parent family is not very easy, you know? So if I look happy, inside there's something that is still sort of just tight and just holding myself, you know. I'm not going crazy, you know. <laughs> and probably in 10 years when he's 20, 21, I could finally go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to see that. <laughs> no, I mean crazy in a sense of just be free, uh -huh. you know. <clears throat> I don't feel free now. I'm a bit proud about the fact that I survived. I survived all that knocking and terrible things that went on after John's death, you know. And, um, but I still can't get over John's death, which that part of it, I think I have to just cope by myself. And in a way, I think I'll, I just have to be kind to myself and uh, take it slowly. Yoko Ono. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> 